Welcome to the Art of Balancing It All podcast, a podcast where we get real about the struggles of trying to balance it all from love, family, self-care, career, and entrepreneurship. Every two weeks, we'll talk to dope guests who will give you the goods on how to succeed in this thing called life. We are your hosts. I'm Pam Thompson-Smith, better known as The Firm. And I'm Titi Lyle Ellis, the ambassador of Buzz. Welcome to the Art of Balancing It All. I am Pam Thompson-Smith, also known as The Firm. And I am T.T. Lyle Ellis, also known as the Joy Builder Coach. Yes, the name change. I mean, you know, what ha- we're going to talk about this in just a second. I want to know what happened from Ambassador of Buzz to the Joy Builder Coach. So I can't wait to talk about that. We're just I'm excited to be back. It's good. To finally be back. It's been a few weeks uh, since we've been on. We've had a lot going on and my fault that we missed, you know, the last week of February because I was a little sick, a little under the weather, (laughs) you You know, which is really something to talk about because it was due to the vaccine. Right. You know. Mm -hmm. Had mm-hmm. a few side effects, but I tell you what, I'm not on a ventilator, so I'll do it again <laughs> <laughs> tomorrow if I need to. And plus, I needed to rest, so that was good. It knocked me out for a few days, um, yeah. so we weren't able to come in February, but I'm glad, glad, glad to be back. Um, yeah, it's like a lot going on for me, for Thompson Smith Consultant LLC. It's grant season, so, you yeah. know, that's <laughs> I've been knee-deep in grants and uh and now i'm planning there's two holidays in addition to all the other holidays on the calendar right there's mm-hmm. two one is my birthday of course yeah. it's not my birthday though that's back that's in october but it's my <laughs> <laughs> it's my baby girl's birthday so yeah, i'm planning baby. you know her party so her birthday is next saturday uh so now that i'm back healthy again i'm planning her party so that's what's been you know working and and getting ready for the big 22. Yeah. <laughs> and I still call her my baby, but 22. Oh my gosh, 22. <laughs> yes, yes. So Naya Smith, happy early birthday. Happy Mommy birthday. loves you. <laughs> so back to the real news, you know, like <laughs> the real news. What's going on? The Joy Builder Coach. Tell oh, me what you got going on, Missy. Oh, so um, as you know, I have been going back and forth about following my purpose and really getting out there and teaching about how to build a sustainable joy and how that comes from self-love and also deep introspection. And so I started off late 2020 writing an ebook. That ebook is now finished. It came from the editor. Um, nothing but great feedback. Um, the review circle that I've had, I've had my review circle actually find new things that they are implementing right now. So it's already had an impact on people. And so I'm so excited about it. I'll be rolling out this ebook along with lives and new content talking about ways that you can just consistently build joy. And to just help people keep in mind, women especially, (laughs) keep their joy top of mind because we oftentimes get so busy, so caught up, and then we turn around and we've forgotten ourselves. So I'm so excited about it. I'm excited too. I think I'm probably in the book just not mentioned because I think you used me as the first test. Oh, <laughs> and I can yeah. say that I passed. Yes, yes, I indeed. passed. I used those steps and it is amazing, y'all. I'm telling you, Thank it you. will help you get your joy back. Yes, um, and not just get your joy back, but you realize that it's unbreakable joy, right? That's right. That's right. It's unbreakable joy. So I'm so excited, TT. So what's next? You know, we got a little time. What? How do they get more information? What's What's happening next? They, they can actually go to ttlyoellis.com. That's T-I-T-I-L-A-Y-O-E-L-L-I-S.com. They can sign up today um, to get more information if they sign up. Before the before, before it's released, if it's after it's released, they will have the ebook information right then and there, and they can purchase the ebook. The ebook is titled "How to Build Unbreakable Joy," and it has five practices in it. Practices I know you can adapt today. I'm so excited about it. 
I'm excited for you. I'm super <laughs> proud of you. Congratulations. And what a great month yes. to launch your new ebook. It yes. is Women's it's International Women's History Month. So, yes. you know, perfect timing. I'm so mm -hmm. proud of you, woman. <laughs> I'm so excited. So oh, super excited. And today, speaking of International Women's Month and talking yeah. about amazing women, you know, so the theme is like choose to challenge, right? From yeah. challenge comes change. And so that's what we're going to be doing this month and the whole rest of this year. We should choose to challenge. But as we think of amazing women, wow, mm -hmm. our guest today, she's my imaginary best friend. She's a woman who is passionate about challenging herself and all the people that she coaches to choose to challenge, to choose to make a change, to choose to have impact. We are super excited to have her join us today. And I'm going to tell you just a little bit about her magic. Yes. She brings over 20 years plus of rich, varied experiences. She's a business coach. She's an influence mastery advisor. She's an amazing speaker. Her professional career includes positions. She's been a university associate professor. She's done millions of things. Her passion for coaching and the sincere desire to make a positive impact on people led her to develop effective evidence-based leadership and partnership programs. She's a veteran scientific and leadership presenter. She does so many things. She's been seen in, on television. Guess where? Let's see. CBS News, <laughs> Daily News, New York, Ooh. USA Today, you know, all these things. And guess what? Recently, Forbes. She's a contributor to Forbes. Man, she does it all. But this is what I love. She is now a nine-time first international bestseller, not just bestseller, international, not one, not two, not three, yes. but nine times, nine times. She's amazing. What does she talk about? Stress management. Mm -hmm. One thing that you love, TT, mindfulness, mm -hmm. <laughs> critical <laughs> thinking, leadership and influence, um, emotional intelligence and more. Let's welcome to our stage the amazing Divya Parak. Oh, I am excited and I'm tired. <laughs> I don't know if I'm all that. You are. Yes, you are. As, they, as they say, you are all that at a bag of chips. Yes. But on top of that, one of the sweetest people you could ever be. It's just amazing. Oh, just amazing. Thank you, lady. And it's only so wonderful to be with you. And it's it's a, it's an honor to be in your company, both of you. And I want to say two things before we get started. Sure. Happy birthday to your daughter and congratulations to you, TT, on your ebook. Thank you. Thank you Thank so you. much. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. I'm so excited. Well, welcome to the Art of Balancing It All. We are so excited to have you here, especially because it is International Women's Month. But before we start, we want to make sure we do our wellness check. How are you as we approach the year-long anniversary of the pandemic starting? How are you doing? Swell. <laughs> good. <laughs> <laughs> good. That's good. You're doing good. Any reflections on this past year or how you were able to navigate and pivot? Absolutely. So reflections... We all go through different stages. And mm -hmm. one of the things I want to share is that I'm perfectly flawed. So Dang. I don't have a lot of, uh, how should I say that? I got to do this. I got to do this. I aim for it. And I put in my best efforts. And at the same token, if I'm not able to do it, then I do fall short of my... <laughs> kind of expectation, you know, we all do that. Mm -hmm. But at the same token, I'm able to look at it that, okay, let me examine the situation. Let me examine my expectation. And then let me take a look at it that what I'm thinking is right or not. Or is it just my little me inside talking that I should have done this. And mm -hmm. so I'm able to move past this. Okay. So reflection, what I want to share is that well, it seems 2020, like, yeah, it was a long year. So in 2019, 
we decided as a team to pivot to retreats because here we were and we were thinking like you know we're so tired of this online zoom calls and all that yeah because i've been in online world for quite some time mm -hmm. let's go for retreats let's have that one-on-one -on -one and bring in women or a mix and done for you and done with you business so people come in not only they rejuvenate recharge mm -hmm. but also they get their business done ah. by the time like you know five we had three retreats done so think about it you know building a whole business model getting people mm -hmm. finding vendors mm -hmm. good caterers good places cruises at nova scotia and oh, a goodness. nice big old house by the beach Ooh. and figuring out that okay who's going to have what so everything ironed out and come so I want to take you back to probably sometime in February. I was meeting mm -hmm. one of my authors. Mm -hmm. So that is one of my arms where I help people write their message because the whole idea is that how can we give a megaphone to their message? Yeah. People have a message and how can we give them a megaphone? Because think about it, whatever they think that, oh, I just went through the things but mm -hmm. that can become somebody's survival guide. Amen. So to me, stories are so powerful. So I'm sitting there with one of my, it's a New York City, just hustling and bustling in Tutoria, which is right across, uh, I don't know if you know that uh, seven story Macy's and Tutoria is one of the- I and, do. Uh, oh, yeah, it's- I definitely do. Oh, oh, wow, okay. So <laughs> y'all know how good the food is. <laughs> We are sitting there, we had a manager come in and I, we are looking at, they have a like an enclosed space. Mm -hmm. And we thought, how about, I was talking with my mother, how about if we do your book launch in month, month, month and a half over here? And he's so excited. We have talked about it. We have looked at the menu. Mm -hmm. And then of course, you know, come February and we have three retreats all planned out ahead mm -hmm. of the game. And I'm like, yeah, this year is going to look great. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah, this, yeah, we got it. You know, we, yes, <laughs> winning, we got this. And then, of course, late February, you know, like I had heard, I had started hearing about COVID-19 by end of January, early February, and coming from scientific background. Yes. I had a good instinct along mm -hmm. with just kind of looking at the research papers and all that, that we would be going into a lockdown or we would be going somewhere where retreats were definitely not going to happen. Yeah. So we had a, we, you know, I got my team together, we talked and I said, I think so we need to just return the money back to all our potential authors because like, you know, one whole retreat was where they were going to finish writing their books. Mm. I mean, not completely, but have all the outline and story done. And then we were going to finish it off for them and have the funnel set up for business and yeah. their course and all that. Like, so people were excited, but we did lose some money, actually quite a bit of money because, you know, some of those are non-refundable. Mm -hmm. And so I said, okay, it's time to cut our losses because the more closer you get to the date, the more money you lose, right? The yeah. more money you lose. And unless, even if it is, uh, yes, this was act of God and all that, but you know, it's a, again, kind of going like tug of war. Oh, because they're in the same boat. They don't, they would Maybe. be shut down. So I said, whatever it is. And so many authors and so many women were so upset with us. Why are you shutting down? This is not expected. And he said, we have to. Mm -hmm. So you can imagine yeah. feeling right here on yeah. this high and planning at least like, you know, two to three book launch events. We had planned with a couple of stores actually in Manhattan where I'd been visiting, you know, two to three times. And we had planned, talked with the manager and planned book launches for two to three of my authors and the whole idea of getting their books in the retail stores. It's very mm -hmm. exciting. Yeah. from there and from all this hype you just go to flat you know yeah. <laughs> i mean wow. it was not even flat 
And okay, what do we do now? For four yeah. months, you know, we spent three and a half months in preparing for retreats, and now we are in in March. Six months have gone by. We have to pivot. Yeah. So we pulled together and we were down. I will be very honest with you. It was very disappointing. And we were all kind of a little bit torn down. Mm -hmm. You know, we didn't want to like, okay. And then we were just there for each other, gave ourselves time. You know, we just listened to each other as a team. And then we just, we were just there. We said, okay, we are going to give ourselves one week of time. We put a notice <laughs> that, okay. And even if you're feeling down, that's fine, but we are going to turn it around. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes what happens is that the time of coping and the time to bounce back can become mm -hmm. a crutch. And that's, that's right. something you got to keep an eye out. Mm -hmm. So there were two to three team, mem team members who were not completely on board. And we have had, we have had throughout the year where people have lost it. People have cursed at each other. We have had a lot of fragmented relationships mm -hmm. and yet we have kind of come through. I mean, are the broken hearts? Yes, they're broken hearts because it's like, okay, we have worked together for five years and what's happening and people have lost it, you know, and this is the reality of life. Mm -hmm. We just can't say, oh yeah, you know, everything was hunky dory and oh yeah, I just kind of jazzed through it, moved through it. No. Just yeah, like anybody cool. else, we had to deal with it. And so we pivoted, we did marketing, we did research and started coming out with uh, low price programs. And mm -hmm. I'm very happy to share. It's been one of our best years ever. Wow. Awesome. Yes. <laughs> Look at that. Look at that. That is so amazing. Um, before I go into my next question, as you talk about this, is there anything else you want to tell us about what you do? You, you know, I kind of gave the big sky skyscraper sure. view, but what do you <laughs> what, what do you do, my best friend, <laughs> my imaginary so, best friend? Oh, I love that imaginary. At least, <laughs> oh, I'm coming in her imagination. Now that makes me feel so good. <laughs> well, I tell people that now as uh, I keep on niching down what I do, mm -hmm. I help people build a sustainable and scalable business. Mm -hmm. And that is through building repeatable systems. That's the first thing we take a look at. And not everybody needs to have everything. I gotta have webinar platform. Oh, I gotta have a whole website. Oh, I gotta have... Oh, Facebook and Instagram landing pages, and I gotta have the all the ads. No. So where we simplify and depending on the need of a person, we customize and you can have a simple funnel. Mm -hmm. Not spend thousands of dollars on all the different platforms like oh Kajabi. Okay, I gotta do Kajabi membership site. You don't have to do everything. You yeah. simplify it. So we simplify the complicated process and then we help people become the trusted leaders. Because what has happened is that with the advent of COVID-19, mm -hmm. I mean, people were on internet marketing anywhere. And even before that, like, you know, everybody was on moving online. And mm -hmm. now people are more and more moving online. So it's, right. it's a constant flux of that. So we help people become the trusted leader in their industry, coming from a place of intentionality to serve and operate from a place of integrity. And that is through multiple things. It is through developing their message. Mm. It is to help them create a book, which is very strategic. That's a portal to rest of their business, whether it's for the speaking engagement or it's for building courses or for the membership site. And then we help them gain media exposure. Awesome. So proud of you. So proud of you. Oh, uh, thank you. Thank you. You know, you both are just so wonderful. Thank you. <laughs> uh, my next question, as we talked about, you know, we're here is International Women's History Month. What does that mean to you and the theme of Choose the Challenge? Expound more on what that means to you. Mm, can I be contrary? Yes. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay, women. You may hate me after this, but... I want to invite you and I want to challenge you and I'm mm -hmm. going to share a story. So to me, what it means is that 
humanity has reached a benchmark mm. where women were not able to vote. There were suffragettes. Where, if you go and look at 1950 ads, a guy comes tired from home, you know, he's mm -hmm. inside the home, he gives his coat, yes, and right. then yeah. he gives his bag, and the woman says, honey, did you have a good day? Dinner is ready and served. From there, we have come to a place where women are rising to the top. Mm -hmm. A lot of things are happening. They are shining their light. Yeah. And we all look at the positive side. I want to look at the dark side. Do, you, do I have a permission to do that? You do. You do. So you absolutely do. Recently, I'm not going to take any names. And I'll change the story a little bit. So in case if my client is listening, she cannot recognize her in herself. We're sitting down. It's been, uh, she is a big executive in one of the companies and her husband is also an executive in one of the companies. Mm. We were having conversation and she was just badgering her husband. Mm. And before, and every time she'd just badger her husband. And then as we did coaching and as we found, he's working a whole lot more hours than her and mm. cannot show up for kids. But whenever he has time, he can do that. Mm -hmm. So folks in our quest of gaining equality in our quest of moving forward, I want us to remember that female women are nurturers. Mm -hmm. And it's as important to be a mom as it's important to be a partner to your husband or being a sister or being an executive or being a businesswoman or having that identity. So I want us to invite and think about that when you're in a sanctity of a partnership, whether you're even with friends, think about it, look for partnership and don't go so far out that you may be destroying your own home because mm -hmm. think about it as we talked about it, she did discover that her husband was doing everything and both are making such good money that she arrived at a conclusion that they could hire somebody to take their kids around and then show up for their kids for like, you know, daughter does swimming whenever they can mm -hmm. and sit down and have a family time and say, listen, mommy and daddy are doing this. So, and so because of this, 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 but we love you mm -hmm. rather than she creating at a verge that where her husband was on a verge of breakdown. So we don't want to go that route, folks. Mm -hmm. So yes, some of you may say that, oh, how did you like, you know, you're not taking women's side. And <laughs> I'm just saying that be a human first and then a woman mm -hmm. because you come packed with nature. So do not underestimate the power of your nurturing and yes. the power of femininity. We don't have to become manly to have the power. Mm, so I hope so it was okay that I shared that story. Yes. yes. That was powerful. <laughs> that was powerful. First of all, I love that you said the sanctity of marriage, just putting it in that term. Mm -hmm. um, and, and one of the things I've often shared with my uh, friends is that I feel like my parents, they raised me to be strong, but not, they didn't talk about the nurturing side of things. So it was a lesson that I had to learn, Divya, <laughs> over years of the importance of nurturing. So I love that you bring that up, but That's let's unpack awesome. that a little bit. Uh, we were about to transition into mindful mastery versus mindset and what you just talked about, it really does take being mindful of your actions, uh, being mindful, as you said, being a human, considering others. Uh, let's talk about that importance of mindfulness, um, mindfulness mastery versus mindset and the importance of that in self-development and a woman having an impact that goes beyond just a successful career, but having an impact on her family, on her community, on the world. 
So what I want to thank you, Didi, for bringing that up. And what I want to mm -hmm. talk about is that, yes, women have been dealt not a strong hand over the centuries. Mm -hmm. Yes, even today, we are not where we should be. Mm -hmm. And yet, think about it. When you come strong, to me, being strong and secure does not mean putting somebody down. Yes. Because when you're doing that, how are we different from other gender or from other person, whether it be another woman or whether it be another alien? I don't know, <laughs> you know, or yeah. another gender. So mm -hmm. if you're going and turning around and doing the same thing, mm -hmm. that's not who we are. Yeah. We, I see women as someone who embodies grace, mm -hmm. who brings that nurturing. Think about nature. I look, I look women as nature. And I'm not saying that men are not nature, you know. Wonderful dads out there. Today, we're just kind of focusing on women. So think about it. What does nature do? I'm not saying that let anybody step over you. Because acceptance does not mean condoning. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And forgiving does not mean forgetting. Yeah. So you can still stand up. You can still be secure. You can still be strong and bring your sense of leadership. And when you talk about mindfulness mastery, let's mm -hmm. just talk, go back to my client's story. Yes. If she had been mindful, she would have seen that her husband was already feeling so guilty that he wasn't present for his kids versus she making him even feel more guiltier mm -hmm. that he started seeing a therapist without her knowing. Mm. Mm. If she had been mindful, she would have seen what impact it was having on the kids. Mm -hmm. If she had been mindful, she would have seen that her colleagues, men, women alike, had stopped liking her because she was just coming as this bitter woman. If she would have seen that, okay, you know, this situation is hard because COVID-19 has been hard on people, kids studying from home. What if she had like, okay, we both are making good money. What if we give a mom who does not have a job right now, who could teach the kids, who could maybe has grown up, grown up kids and who could come to the house, help children throughout the day. And then maybe, you know, if they want to, there are not that many activities going on and maybe just kind of take them out and teach them, put her, put them in her car and take them to park and teach them over there, give them more exposure, take them to a museum. So think about it. Just having that mindfulness in that situation would have been so much healthier for the whole family versus eight months of misery for everyone. Mm -hmm. And what happened was that the kids started bad mouthing their dad. Oh, mom says you're this, mom says you're that. So think about that, that mindfulness mastery, because what I feel is that, and one of the things I'll share that is, you know, a man educated is one person educated and a woman educated is a family educated yes absolutely is a village <laughs> yes, educated absolutely. so you do not realize yes. how much power you have yes, and right. that's that's what i want to bring this mindfulness mastery bridging break that gap break forget down. about yes. yes forget about that you're standing on the edge of potential look inside the womb of your genius that you have the genius pull it out you have the power to give birth you have the power to give birth to your genius. And that's Ooh. what mindfulness mastery is all about. Yes, indeed. Wow. Look that's inside wow. your genius. Yes. That's powerful. That's powerful. Uh, so I have a follow-up. Take you to, as you say, the dark side a little bit, right? So we talked about being mindful and recognizing who we are and being aware and being nurturing. But we also are creating or we are leaders. Right. So when you talk about being mindful and then you um, talk about mindset, how do you be mindful and also develop, you know, a leadership mindset? So leadership mindset comes in knowing that you are enough. Leadership mindset comes in knowing you're already equipped. You don't need anything else. Mm. 
wherever you are right at this minute and doesn't matter if you're working in Macadies, doesn't matter you are the VP in one of the Fortune 50 companies, you come equipped. The key is recognizing that genius within you mm. and doing something about it. It's about claiming that stage, stepping mm. onto it, owning that power. And when you own that power, Pam, you don't need to validate yourself to anyone. You don't need approval from anyone because there are going to be naysayers. There That's are right. going to be people who are like, oh, yeah. Oh, she just thinks too much of herself and it's okay. Who she thinks she is. <laughs> yes. And that's okay. So that's where I talk about even that mindfulness mastery. We talked about the dark side, but think about it. To combat that dark side is about rising like that phoenix mm. out of the ashes of the hundreds of years where we did not have that say or anything like that. Just spreading your wings like that glorious blue heron. I mean, I love blue heron and claiming that stage, owning it. And it's okay to have that shine, that light and say, yes, I'm a leader. When you're confident, stand tall because being confident doesn't mean you're arrogant. Mm -hmm. so when you toot your horn with humility and through the power of sisterhood, folks, what a beautiful example here. We are tooting each other's horn. That's Build right. that power circle with other women. Mm -hmm. Create that circle. There's nothing more powerful than creating a circle and helping lift each other. So mindset, mindset comes from accepting that leadership, accepting that power within you, accepting that genius, realizing that potential. And when you're mindful, so mindfulness is just not about how you're behaving. Mindfulness is also knowing about your glory and grace given by God. Mm -hmm. wow. And then knowing that it's your responsibility to be a leader because you have that power within you. Yes. And when you're not rising to your power, you're actually doing a disservice to yourself and to others that you could serve and impact and influence. Excellent. Good we stuff. <laughs> yes, yes. As we look at the past year, um, there's been several different movements that has spawned um, a growing leadership in major corporations of women of color rising to positions of not only influence, but they're, they are literally disrupting the industries that they are in. They are disrupting the way that their companies are doing business. And as they move forward with this, while ears are open, right? Because ears are, these ears were never open in so many different ways, but you only have a window of time mm -hmm. to prove that this is the direction you need to go in. So how can these leaders at all levels use emotional intelligence as a way to make sustainable disruption, to, to make an impact that we can continue to sort of knock down these walls and bring women up to levels that they can truly make change, sustainable change. So how can they pull emotional intelligence into that? Oh, beautiful question, ladies. So one of the ways is to do is bringing everybody to the table. Mm -hmm. Getting to know them as human beings yes. doesn't matter who they are, folks. People are people. Mm -hmm. So just recently uh, to have a <laughs> little fun conversation, I was having a conversation with my client and she was totally hung up on her picture that it was not a good picture and how she was looking in social media. I mm -hmm. said, how about if we all took x-rays and just posted a pictures of our skeletons on social media? <laughs> <laughs> What would that be like? <laughs> and she was just sitting there looking at me. <laughs> and she goes, that's right. We all are same. Mm -hmm. So this is the time when you want to show, as you mentioned about, that doesn't matter that you got that power, you have that window, that you are the one who takes the higher road. You are the one who is all about diversity and inclusion and building that equity where you're pulling people in from. Because when you bring people from different experiences, 
your equity is going to be huge because they are going to bring their learnings and together collectively you would work towards the wins because here it is it's about connecting the dots and to me connecting the dot happens when you form those relationships and i'm going to say very strongly build that relationship capital with strategic partners not everybody you cannot go build relationships with people somebody who's totally negative somebody who's totally not willing to support anybody else i would not knock that door so yeah. identifying who are strategic stakeholders especially if you're in the corporate world or even if you're in a entrepreneurial world mm -hmm. and build that relationship capital and reason when i talk about relationship capital is that this is somebody who's got your back this is somebody you've got their back yes so when i talk about That's relationship it. capital is from here heart to heart mm. now and i want to share here folks so Pam, TT, and I, we haven't talked in a long time, but yeah. whenever, if you pick up the phone, we'll pick right back up from That's where right. we left. Yes. So it's a relationship capital and I'm so honored and privileged to be here that they brought me in mm -hmm. as one of the most powerful women to be on their show. So I just feel blessed and humbled and very grateful. So that's a relationship that capital. You. Yes, we feel blessed to have you for sure. Very. I like that relationship capital. We got to remember. Yes. That's good. That's good stuff. Relationship capital. And it's again going back to the same thing with the heart to serve and support other women. And one of my good friends says, jab, 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 hook. So I have taken that and moved it to give, 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 and then go for an ask. Don't even say that. I did it for you. I need to get something. No, give, give, give. Yes. And then you can ask them with grace. If it works out great, fine. Mm -hmm. If not, I'll tell you things happen organically. Folks, I could tell you stories after stories. Things just happen organically. So yeah. now you provide value. So first step is building strategic partners. Second is building relationship capital from heart where you are providing value and then third is, is that if you believe in disruption, so these are strategic partners, they will be aligned with your core values mm. and with your principles. So when now you're pitching that disruption, the idea will be welcomed because what you've done is you've taken the time to understand them. Mm. You've taken the time to see what are their dreams, what are their goals. You mm. cannot do the disruption like, just this idea is good. I'm just going to go in there, go lead, and then everybody's going to follow. It right. doesn't happen that way. The grassroots movements begins when everybody has bought in. You don't have to convince people. And why do you don't have to convince people? Because they've already bought into you. They are aligned with your principles. And now when you put forth an idea, I will say that disruption should be something that's going to benefit all. It's not just benefiting you. And when you have, so that's an influencer. The last book that I wrote, Expert to Influencer, it was based on a proverb or a saying, which I, it's not mine. I didn't coin it, but I believe in it. <laughs> An influencer is a rising tide that lifts all boats. Yes. So now when you're coming with that idea as a disruption, People will welcome it, people will support it, and you'll be able to bring out the change. So mm -hmm. one of the things that I asked here today, right? We were usually most of the podcasts are working towards positive, positive, positive. And I asked you that, are you okay with my sharing dark side? Are you okay with my sharing where we can go wrong? Mm -hmm. And you both were so welcoming. I mean, I would, I was, I'll tell you, I was hesitant. I wasn't sure how it would be received. and. I said that I cannot see somebody's house and family and home breaking like this. So if I can share and if somebody can learn from it, mm -hmm. I want to share that. So sometimes that emotional intelligence also involves doing the things that you're uncomfortable with, That's right. doing the things that mm -hmm. you are afraid of. So disruption involves that. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I fall <laughs> flat on my face so many times. <laughs> you may fall, no. but it's okay. Yeah. You 
came from a place of good intention and a place mm -hmm. of serving. Mm -hmm. And then you move, continue just marching because journey never ends because I feel that, you know, we are the renters of this earth. Mm -hmm. The earth does not belong to me or to you. It is for us and our responsibility to make this planet a better place for our generations to come. Yes. Awesome. So many nuggets. We're renters of the earth. Imagine if we thought that way. <laughs> right. <laughs> Simply yeah. amazing. Yeah. Um, I think it's your latest book, but you talk about um, how to position yourself for meaningful impact. So um, as a woman, can you, you know, expound for us on what that means, meaningful impact? And is that gender specific that you talk about? It is fortunately or unfortunately non-gender specific because to me, impact has no color, mm -hmm. impact has no gender, impact has no boundaries. Mm -hmm. When a heart, so I'll share a story. I wrote this book, Expert to Influencer, and I sent it out to multiple people and uh, I have to say, even after 20 months, it is still a bestseller. I'm, I'm marketing it. So don't, I don't want to go and say that, oh yeah, it's so wonderful that it's just flying off the shelves on its own. No, I have been marketing it. And it is wonderful because I believe in it. And the profits from the book are going to Kiva.org where entrepreneurs impacted by COVID-19. It's not much, but whatever I, I can share, I share it. So one of the readers reached out to me and shared that this beautiful story. So I just kind of want to share how the impact, how meaningful impact is. My whole goal was that before I wrote the story, it happened from the time I mentored my robotics team and how they grew into these wonderful leaders and how they were helping. So a robotics team, you know, young high schools opened a nonprofit organization and they said, you know, we're not going to charge students who kind of come in. Usually robotics teams run. It can be quite expensive to be part of a robotics team. Mm -hmm. And they said, we'll just open it up. And in our first year, and these are, you know, 16, 17, 18 year olds. It was so beautiful to see them have such a big heart bunch of uh i hope so i'm being politically correct hispanic is that okay to say mm. so young girls probably sixth grade seventh grade one in high school they came to visit and they had like younger uh siblings to very hesitant i think so they were cousins the whole family would come and but they checked out mm -hmm. and we were able to invite them in because we were not charging by the end of the year, these girls, they are like better than so. I mean, again, I don't want to compare girls versus boys, but what I'm saying is that they had such an attitude that I remember from day one to day this, that they're putting that nuts and bolts and figuring out that, okay, no, this needs to happen here. We can have this mechanics here. That is meaningful impact. And now if you share with me, like when we talk about positioning, positioning to me is that you stand behind a cause. Mm -hmm. You create a business, you create a principle, you create a life. It's a way of being in such a way that doesn't matter. Even if you're impacting one person, that's meaningful impact. And to me, that is positioning. And positioning is as a leader, you can show up. So one of my recent calls has been folks. And if, as you are listening, Think about it, if even one hour was given by 100 million people in US, I'm just talking US alone, 100 million hours per month. Let's say there were like, you know, 20 people who went for a house in areas where the houses are not available. People don't have like, you know, takes money. They just spend 20 hours. After every day, everybody's coming, picking up the work, one hour a month, 100 million hours, how can we not turn this country around? How can we not turn our brothers and sisters around? So to me, that's a meaningful impact. To me, meaningful is positioning about standing for a cause. To me, it's about making a difference to people. 
What is your cause? Take mm -hmm. that cause and stand for it. And yes, there will be people who will hate you. <laughs> there will be people who don't like you. And that's a okay. People, <laughs> people are not liking you, you are doing something right. Not everybody's going to like you, folks. Yeah. So stand for something <laughs> and go to bats for it. It's okay because if you believe in a cause, you gotta rise and you gotta make a difference. Oh, that was good. That is oh, so wow. Good. I feel yeah, like you were so talking good. directly to me as I forged <laughs> on this path. Like, TT, everybody's not gonna like you. <laughs> and I could have told you that. <laughs> but Ask me how I know. Yes. <laughs> You know, folks, we all know things. Sometimes, you know, we just need to be reminded of. And that's what my coach does to me. Oh, yeah. I knew that. Okay. Yeah. Why are you not acting upon it? You knew it. <laughs> and it's okay, right? It's okay. It's okay. Yes. It's so important to be self-compassionate going back to the mm -hmm. mindfulness. Mm -hmm. Mindfulness means not judging yourself and not judging others. Woo. Absolutely. Yep. You gave the word, our word all the time is grace. And you gave that at the very beginning to give yourself grace. Give yourself grace and give others grace. My goodness. So thank you so much again for joining us, Divya. We are going to make sure that everyone knows exactly how to contact you. Uh, we will put all the information for Divya, including the books that you can purchase from her on the art of balancing it all. Thank you for joining us this week. On The Art of Balancing It All, make sure you visit the website, theartofbalancingitall.com, where you can subscribe, you can join, you can look at other episodes, you can dive deep into this episode. We are on Podbean, iTunes, Google Podcasts, everywhere that you can listen to a podcast. Thank you, ladies. I love you both. And I love you, listeners. And I can't wait to see you unfold your potential. So go get out there and realize your potential. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Divya. Thank you so much. And everyone, Thank please you. be sure to follow us on social media at The Art of Balancing It All. We're on Instagram. We're on Facebook and Twitter. If you love the show, make sure you let us know. Leave us a rating so we can continue to bring you great dope shows with dope guests like Divya. <laughs> we look forward to talking to you real soon. Thanks for listening.